Even for a miserable rainy day like today, Stonehenge will have many visitors. Here at Woodhenge, this is not such the case, and it's only five miles away. This Neolithic monument was discovered from the air as aerial photography allowed us to see the wooden stumps of the past. I visited Wiltshire Museum to find out more. Someone from in the RAF was flying over it and he spotted there was this circle in the crop, in the crop of corn, made by little round holes and that intrigued him. And it's the first site that was actually found through aerial photography. And what happens is the chalk is actually quite close to the surface. The soil is only about six inches deep. So when the corn is growing, if it's over the chalk, it doesn't have very far to get to, for the roots to go down. But if there are holes in the ground, post holes, then the roots can go down into that and, they get lo- and the, the, the plants can get lots more water. And when it's very dry, then of course those plants do much better. And so it's that that creates that sort of shape that you can see from the air. There are six ovals in total, and there's a ditch around them. Of course, wood doesn't last that long, so instead, to represent all of these posts, we have these lovely concrete pillars. It's not the same, and it's not amazing like Stonehenge, the original stones, but it is something. What would this place have looked like, and perhaps what would it have been used for? Big That's question. a million dollar question. Yes, I thought <laughs> because that. Because all you know, all we know as archaeologists is the the size of the holes that those posts were dug into. So it's just, if you like, you're building a fence in your garden. But the size of them, some of them, they're absolutely massive. And we know they're oak because there are traces of the wood still there, the wood that were still left. And so you can imagine that most of the posts could have been as tall as tree trunks. You think of any of them having bark on, but maybe they had the bark taken off. Maybe they were painted. This is the sort of thing we can never get to as archaeologists, but you can, your imagination can just run riot. Back then, the materials they had to use were pot, bone and stone, which is why all the findings from the site consisted of this. What caught my eye the most was the antler, which was used to dig out the ground, creating that ditch that surrounds the henge. There's also pottery called grooveware because of the grooves it has. Two axe heads are also here, to which David told me one of them would have taken around 500 hours to make. But I noticed there's one in white as well. There's an axe made of chalk. Now, chalk is soft. Yeah, why would you have an axe made of chalk? That seems... (laughs) Well, your guess is as good as mine, but my guess is that... um, Somebody wanted to sort of present an axe as perhaps as an offering or to represent something. And so rather than giving their bomb that had taken them hours to make, I thought, I can do this on the cheap. Mm. Just have a chalk one. The site was originally excavated by Maud Cunnington in the 1920s, who took meticulous efforts to publish and preserve as much as possible from the dig. She was the first woman as an archaeologist in England to have her work recognised and was awarded an MBE for her work. She created a colour-coded key for each stump ring on the floor plan that makes the site a lot easier to understand. But before I go, I had one final question for David. Should people visit Woodhenge? Is it just as good as Stonehenge? It is just up the road, isn't it? Well, you can't understand Stonehenge if you just go and see the stones. You need to explore the landscape to understand it properly. And something that I do a couple of times each year is I take a group from um, Durrington Walls, which is the henge down in the bottom of the valley, just alongside Woodhenge, from there to Woodhenge, and then through the landscape, passing the Cursus and the Barrows to end up at Stonehenge. That then gives you real insight to this sacred landscape. Fantastic. David, thank you very much for today. It's a pleasure. And I found out so much about Woodhenge and things that have genuinely made me excited about it. So can't wait to tell my friends about it as well. Well, <laughs> lots of people should go and see it. And come and see the real stuff in the museum too. Absolutely. Come on down to Wiltshire Museum. Thank you. May I shake your hand as well? Of course. Thank, thank you, you very much and have a nice day as well. Thank you. Thank you. 
After everything I've learned today, I have to say that yes, Stonehenge is spectacular, but Woodhenge is something else and is free to enter. Places like this at the summer solstice must be really interesting to go to as well, because yes, Stonehenge is very popular, but a place like this with the same Neolithic historical importance must be really, really profound to visit as well. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.